Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is about clear flood mode. What is it? Why is it important? And how can I use it to my advantage? And before we get started, I'd like to read the results of yesterday's poll. And I really appreciate you guys voting in these polls because it really helps me put these lame videos together. So it says, Technician A says clear flood mode disables the fuel system to prevent the engine from starting. Technician B says clear flood mode disables the ignition system to prevent the engine from starting. And in 16 hours we had 83 votes. And 17 people said Technician A only. 4 people said Technician B only. 31 people said both of them. 4 people said neither technician and 27 people said please make a video about clear flood mode. So uh, before I get into my notes I wanted to see if uh, my owner's manual uh, said uh, anything about this and I found three sentences that I think are interesting that I'd like to read to you now. And if you'd like to follow along I'm in the King James Version uh, 2010 uh, page 173 and it says on here when starting a fuel injected engine avoid pressing the accelerator before or during starting only use the accelerator when you have difficulty starting the engine for more information on starting the vehicle refer to starting the engine in this chapter note if the engine does not start within five seconds on the first try, turn the key to the off position, wait 10 seconds, and try again. If the engine still fails to start, press the accelerator to the floor and try again. This will allow the engine to crank with the fuel shut off in case the engine is flooded with fuel. And number three, do not crank the engine for more than 10 seconds at a time as starter damage may occur. If the engine fails to start, turn the key off and wait 30 seconds before trying to start again. So what is uh, clear flood mode? Well, uh, I want to go back to the mid-1980s, around 1985. And that's when um, cars, or that's when electronic fuel injection really started to get popular and carburetors starting to get, started to get phased out. And uh, if you've ever uh, grew up in that time or ever driven a carbureted vehicle, uh, starting them in uh, the various uh, winter weather conditions uh, can be a little bit challenging. And each vehicle was different and it's almost like each vehicle had a different starting procedure. Uh, some of them would say you have to uh, depress the accelerator pedal a certain amount of times. Uh, some would say you'd have to um, uh, push the accelerator pedal halfway uh, and crank it. And when it starts at release. And then uh, some of them had an automatic choke. Some of them had a manual choke. And to make things even more complex, under the hood, uh, there was usually two screws. There was a fuel mixture screw and an idle speed mixture or idle speed screw. And uh, even a trained uh, technician uh, might have difficulty setting those two screws uh, properly. So you can just imagine what a disaster it was for the average uh, consumer uh, trying to get their car started. <clears throat> So uh, around uh, the late 80s is when uh, electronic fuel injection kind of took over and uh, it was really helpful because nobody had to remember uh, how to start the car. It's just turn the key and go. But uh, 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 during those uh, carbureted days, uh, if you screwed up the starting procedure, you may have added too much fuel into the engine and you would flood the engine and you couldn't get it started until it dried out. So one of the ways you would do that was with the clear flood mode procedure where you hold the accelerator pedal to the floor, crank the engine, and hopefully that would force out any uh, liquid fuel and bring in some fresh air to uh, dry the cylinder out and maybe dry the spark plug off. <clears throat> so uh, that's what the uh, clear flood mode procedure uh, started with. 
and uh, it's it's still with us today, but just not used uh, probably quite not as often unless you have some kind of malfunction with a fuel injector where it's not uh, shutting off or it's uh, constantly delivering fuel into the uh, uh, combustion chamber. <clears throat> so I came up with a, I came up with a few examples of how clear flood mode ha has uh, helped me throughout the years. And my first and favorite thing is I use it to diagnose a no-start condition. And whenever you're starting to work on a car with a no-start, you just got to go back to basics and remember the three requirements for an internal combustion engine. And it's compression, ignition, and fuel. And I can't say that without saying suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So excuse me for that. So uh, usually one of the first things you want to check is compression. And uh, depending on your application and where the spark plugs are located and how long it's going to take you to take them all out, uh, you might want to do a cranking manifold vacuum test. And that's with a vacuum tester. And um, I like to call this the uh, one hour versus one minute test. You know, sometimes you're working on a car, it can take you up to an hour to get all eight spark plugs out of the car and get it set up ready to go for a compression test. But when you want to do a cranking manifold vacuum test, you know, you can have that thing set up within 60 seconds ready to go. You just got to pull off a vacuum line and you're ready to go. And I've got a, a really good video on how to do a cranking manifold vacuum test and I'll put a link to that video down below. So um, if you're not familiar with what a cranking manifold vacuum test is, uh, it's kind of like the exact opposite of a compression test. A compression test, you're testing the air trying to be forced out of the spark plug hole with a pressure tester. And with a manifold vacuum test, you're testing the vacuum of the air being sucked in through the manifold, but instead of testing each individual cylinder, you're testing all the cylinders at once. So it can be a huge time saver. And uh, once you get experience uh, using your vacuum gauge on a multitude of vehicles, uh, you can be able to uh, diagnose a no-start condition very quickly. Um, and uh, that'll turn you on to your next step of where to look, uh, why it's not starting. So uh, moving on to the uh, ignition, uh, checking for ignition. Uh, usually one of the things you want to do on a modern vehicle is you want to check the injector uh, pulse signal with a noid light. And if you don't know what a noid light is, it's something that looks like this. Uh, they sell a kit at Harbor Freight for 35 bucks, and there's these little lights that you plug into the fuel injector connector. And when you crank the engine, uh, you, sh you should see this little light uh, blink, and that tells you that the PCM is uh, delivering signal to the injector for it to fire. Now, when you're doing, now if you're doing one of these tests, <laughs> uh, the clear flood mode is not going to help you out because when you depress the accelerator pedal, uh, it's going to shut off the injector. So this is this is an example of when you would not want to use this procedure, and you would want to. Uh, pull a fuse or a relay. And if you're not sure which fuse or which relay to pull, I've got a video on uh, our introduction to our Crown Victoria uh, fuse box. I'll put a link to that video down below too. So moving on, uh, testing, uh, or yeah, that is fuel. So another reason why uh, the clear flood mode can be uh, helpful is when you want to um, Oh yeah, if you also want to do a fuel pressure test or a fuel volume test. And uh, okay, so my next favorite thing is uh, getting, uh, is checking your uh, starting system for overall health. And as you saw in the video when I was cranking, I've got my little voltmeter plugged into my power port here. And uh, I leave mine plugged in 24-7 all the time. And whenever I start my engine, I look at what the voltage drop drops to when it's cranking. And uh, usually, as a general rule of thumb, you want to see cranking voltage stay above 9.6 volts. And uh, if it drops below 9.6 volts, uh, that may indicate a weak or failing battery, or weak or failing starter, or high resistance in the uh, starting circuit. 
<clears throat> and if you really want to get fancy, that's why I hooked up my scan tool, as uh, you want to check the cranking RPM. And usually on a, a, a good working engine, you want to see around 200 RPM uh, cranking. And on my car, uh, on this test, it was around uh, 191, so I think that's pretty good. And um, shout out to X-Tool again uh, for sending me this uh, uh, bi-directional scan tool. Uh, I really like this thing. I tried to do this test with my cheap uh, $12 scan tool, my Elm 327, and it didn't work because during cranking it shut off signal uh, for some reason. But on the, uh, on the X-Tool A30M you could see that it didn't lose signal when, you, when you're cranking, so uh, this thing's working out pretty good. <clears throat> okay, so my next favorite thing uh, or my next favorite uh, way to use this to my advantage is say you're doing a power steering fluid change or flush. Uh, when I change my uh, power steering fluid, I like to uh, pop off one of the lines, uh, the return line, and drain that out and then refill it up with some fresh fluid. And uh, if you crank the engine with, without it starting, you can get the... Uh, uh, the power steering pump to pump uh, the new fluid through the system and you can really do a good job flushing it out. And uh, you kind of don't want to do that with a running engine because if you run it dry uh, you you might run into some uh, problems uh, running the power steering pump dry with fluid. So just cranking it over uh, just a few seconds at a time is somewhat safer than letting the engine run. And uh, my last favorite thing is uh, say is engine oil prime as you saw in the first clip uh, after about 10 seconds of cranking on a cold engine that hasn't been run it takes about 10 seconds to build up oil pressure before the uh, the gauge registers pressure and this can be useful if you've had engine work or you've rebuilt your engine or you've done something like uh, replaced your cylinder heads or replaced your camshaft or etc Okay, uh, so that's uh, my little uh, spiel on clear flood mode and why I like it and how it's been useful to me. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.